Hey, it's Anfa, and to... This is not a gaming channel. Today I'll be showing you how I made the sound for the intro animation you just saw. Remember? Okay, I'll do an instant replay for you. Yeah, so now let's get back in time so I can show you how I made this. Let's go! Alright, so I'm back from the future. Now, here's an Ardor 5 session, and I've got imported the video using the session open video, and then I selected the video. Now it is transcoded, so I don't have to transcode it. If I select it, you see you get these options. Import transcode video. This is what you do when you first import your video to Ardor. And reference from current location previously transcoded. This is very like self-explanatory. So now it's just gonna reload the video because it was already there. And it looks like this. When you're doing sound design for animation, to me, the key thing is to get the timing and to get the atmosphere. So I'm trying to figure out what sounds would fit this image, this motion picture, kind of. So there's a lot of darkness. There's some smoke. There's some glistering lights. There's some noise happening and some bright flash at the end. There's, there's a quick motion when the camera like zooms out or the, or the letters fall in. And then there's lights. So this could be some jingling, tinkling. And then it gets noisy, distorted. And finally it kind of explodes. So I can see some, some clues to what the sound design might be. So what I'm going to do is actually add a, a bunch of Zenit SubFX instances so I can just start synthesizing some sounds that will fit this. And Zen is a pretty heavy plugin, so it takes a while to load into Ardor. Yeah, we're ready. I'm going to also use my external keyboard because it's going to make the things easier. So, let's see, we have the first one, and it's already rooted. For some reason, Ardor was very smart, and it already connected the MIDI ports, which is nice. Okay, so what, what do we have here? I imagine a swoosh, like, I could record this with the microphone, but first, it would be very, very easy. And I wouldn't show anything interesting in the process. And second, it would be difficult to make this really work because uh, mouth sounds are very organic. And what we see here is very technic, very synthetic. I could, of course, process the recorded sounds, but I'm going to try to stick to synthesis as much as I can. Like, I don't have a strict plan of what I'm gonna do. So this is kind of an exploration for me as it is for you. I have some tools, I have some experience of making this for clients. It's good that this is not for a client so I can show you the process because I wouldn't do this with it if, if it were for a client. I wanna make a swoosh. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna record this. I'm gonna press shift space which will activate the record mode because the truck is armed and then it's gonna record notes. It doesn't really matter what the pitch is because I'm going to override this anyway. Now I'm going to press E to enter edit mode so I can change the length of the note. Now G to go to the grab mode where I can edit the... And this is like, yeah. It, the note is there, but it doesn't draw it. So there's some stuff to report in the Ardor Dev Tracker. Let's make this a noisy swoosh. I'm not sure how easy it's gonna be to fit everything on sc one screen because I usually use two, but well, never know. What do we have here? We have add synth. Let's try add synth. I'm gonna go for white noise. We can use our keyboard to help us out. This is very, very bright. It's a little bit painful. Gonna make this quieter. 
Uh, and I'm going to want to make this... Yeah, this is the kind of tempo I think will fit this. No, this is too short. Because the note is higher. I'm gonna lower the note. <laughs> now it's too long. Come on. Now it's a little bit short, but I'm gonna change that with the with the envelope. Okay. Let's try it again. This could work. We can also later shape the um, fade out a bit with the automation. So it doesn't have to be perfect from the start because sometimes, you know, trying to get something perfect will block you for half an hour doing just that. I want to make some motion with filters. So I'm trying to experiment with with the um, band pass. I'm going to maybe make it a little bit sharper and start higher. <laughs> yeah, this is funny. It's a little bit too short. Kinda, kinda sinking. I want to duplicate this voice, so I'm gonna copy the clipboard, switch to another one, and paste it. So I can use a different filter, or different settings for the filter. So I'm gonna start off with a lower, and make this higher, and make this a little bit longer. So we will have like, Let's let's hear the second voice alone. I want to make it a little bit sharper, more resonance. Yeah. And the first one? The first one could be wider. Yeah, so they together form kind of a It's it's there is broad noise and there is narrow noise. Narrow. 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 So we have like complementary, it's it has two characters at the same time. It has noisy character and it has this more narrow uh, whistle-like sound to it, which is very subtle actually. It's much more noisy than whistly, but okay, let's um, maybe try letting in some of the highs because the Lopez filler is by default kind of close from the top. Oh, it doesn't do any change. An edible change in our in this uh, particular sound. Let's see what we can do with effects here, and I think some reverb could be good. But I'm gonna not. I'm not gonna use uh, an internal reverb, and I'm gonna use a plugin for that because I really like the sound of M verb. So I'm going to leave this sound right now. Let's call this. I need to disable the record, this arm for recording, and then I can change the name. Let's call it swoosh. And now let's insert a verb. Yeah, let's hear it. Yeah, this actually could really work. I'm going to put it pre-fader because actually it doesn't really matter for this kind of effect. It would matter for a compressor or a distortion where the input level plays a big role in what tone you get out of the processing. But for reverb, it doesn't really matter. But I prefer to have all plugins pre-fader. I want to try adding some, maybe a chorus, maybe the cough multi-chorus. Let's see and make a loop. So we can tweak the settings and hear what how they change the sound immediately. Cool. 
Could I disable the LFO completely? I think it, the plugin isn't made for like using this manually, but I could get away with some of the automation. Let's see. It's modulation depth. Let's make it play. So it will play our automation. It kind of gives a little bit, I'm afraid it's gonna drift a little bit because we still have some modulation. Um, so we're gonna get different effects based on different time when we play this. We could bounce this to a track, to a stereo audio track. Let's insert just one right now. Mm, for the input, I'm not gonna use this, the system hardware stuff, but use the swoosh output. Yeah, I'm gonna record this. And I'm gonna hit shift space. Let's do one more. Yay, we have them swooshes. Now let's mute this original MIDI track. Control up arrow will shift the track up and this is gonna be our double click swoosh two. Kind of a misnomer, but anyway. Okay, now we have the same effect, just frozen in time, so nothing changes. I'm gonna mute, I muted the, the second instance uh, that I recorded because I don't really wanna use it right now, so maybe, maybe I'll do something with it later. Okay, let's go with the next sound. Let's do something for these bright blue lights that appear on the, on the edges. I want to do something electric, however, I'm not sure really what to do with it. So I will just experiment right now and we will see what happens. The best sounds I've ever made were just created out of experimenting. So good stuff might happen right now. Maybe I'll try using a waveform like a square wave because I want something that's, that will sound similar to a mains hum, this 50 or 60, depending on where you live, buzz that comes out of your power supply. Yeah, kind of this sick. Ah, oh, yes. However, the filter is affected by the velocity of the key hitting. So if I hit it very slightly, we get a different tone. I don't want that. I want this velocity sensing amount. Okay, now the the velocity of the key only affects the, the loudness of the sound. I want to do, I know what I want to do. I want to do some messed up ring modulation this, but I want to use external modulators. So I'm gonna copy this voice over to maybe voice three. Yeah, paste it here. Because currently, Zen Sub FX can, um, can modulate different voices with different voices. I made the first ever video of UV, UV01, modulation, Zen Sub FX modulation madness. It goes a little bit more in depth about this. So if you're, if you're new to this concept, go there and check it out. But the thing is, I can use the previous voices on the list, like if you have the list, like free, voice three can be modulated by voice two or voice one. Voice two can be modulated by can be modulated by voice one. Voice eight can be modulated by seven, six, but uh, all everything above it because they are being calculated in order. So the first is calculated voice one, two, three. When the voice one is calculated, it knows nothing about the rest of the voices, so it can't use that for modulation. And this can be worked around, but it's an overhaul, and uh, well, it's not going to happen soon. So now I'm going to make the first voices that are not going to be used 
Yeah, the first two voices. The first two voices are now mute. So we only hear the third voice. You can see we have a sign here. If we turn it up. Now the interesting part is our square wave has a fixed pitch. It doesn't respond to the number of the key I play. But what we're going to use for mo modulation does. If I make this audible, you can see our modulation, our modulator will respond to pitch. So we'll get different modulation pitch by playing different notes while having the carrier. So the modulated wave waveform stay on the same pitch, which is going to be interesting probably. Let's use ring modulation, select external modulator two. So this is the voice two. And we can hear the ring modulation going up, kicking in. I don't want velocity sensing. This gives you more modulation when you hit the notes harder. But if you turn it all the way up, you have no sensitivity. Like you have no key sensing. No matter how hard you hit the key, it's gonna always do the same amount of modulation. And high frequency dumping. Is something that lowers the amount of modulation when you go with higher pitches. Higher frequencies give much more modulation, which gets very noisy and bad. But we might want that. So I'm turning it up. Turning it, yeah. I'm turning it up so I'm disabling the feature. And I hear the low pass filter really messing up with our sound. So I'm gonna turn it up. And unless you're watching 270p on YouTube, you probably can hear a difference right now. And how about we make a pitch slide of the modulator? Longer. Uh, not so high starting. Yeah, 64 is the middle. So 64 is no change. Below, it's going to go higher and start lower in pitch and then go up. And how about we just shift it a few octaves up? Make it even faster. And how about inverting this? This is very long, really. Like, this is a very short animation. And what happens if we add a few voices to our modulator? Uh, sorry, our carrier. We'll get a stereo. I think I want to do something with the sound so it's going to be more interesting. And I might try modulating it again with the voice one. So I'm going to go all the way up. No velocity sensing, no high frequency dumping. And it just happens so that we left a square wave, very low pitch square wave. Also, it doesn't responding to the key number. How about we make this fade in? So in the beginning, the voice one is silent, so it doesn't modulate the voice two. Actually, I can't hear any difference. Okay. And how about we detune this slightly? So it's gonna be a little bit I want to try and enable a bandpass filter on this, just to experiment. 
So our voice one is a square wave. It's going to be band fast. It's modulating with ring modulation. The voice two, which is a sine wave, slightly falling from the sky high, like going up and then falling down in pitch, which is then ring modulating our square wave that is somewhere in the bass register. register. And if I make this narrower and add a filter envelope. Funny, uh, we heard some harmonic and maybe it was the fundamental. Well, that's a little bit scary. I'm gonna make this a little bit wider so it's not so intense when it hits the harmonic content and How about we make this higher or lower? There's some kick of sounds in here. Okay, let's make the envelopes a little shorter for everyone. I want to add a notch filler here just to see what happens. Maybe. When I play a lower note, it sounds it sounds interesting. I like E notes. Notes of E make interesting sounds. I guess that's uh, probably caused by a certain frequency relation, frequency ratio relationship between the, the fixed tone and the, the notes. Okay, I'm gonna record the E note. Hmm, so this is gonna be our buzz. Okay, it doesn't very closely follow our animation right now. I've just noticed our swoosh is very, very silent, very quiet. Like it, you can see it on the waveform, but it just, right now I realize how quiet it is. I'm gonna add a, a compressor. Kick the input gain a notch, up a notch. Yeah, I want this note to end right when this flash goes off. So I'm gonna hit E to edit, and then I'm gonna just drag the notes and notes end left. Okay, let's re replay home. We get this little slight bleep at the end, which is very nice. It it actually gives me chip tune memories. Now this starts very abruptly, and we need to do this something about it because it's very like it doesn't really fit the the gentle glittering that we have here. So let's see what we can do about that. It actually starts around here. So, let's see, what can I automate? I can automate the part volume, I can automate the filter cutoff, the FM gain, which is, it is actually the amount of modulation on everything, like not just frequency modulation, every, every modulation. I'm gonna use that and see what we can do because we can alter the amount of ring modulation applied in every single moment of our sound. So I'm gonna try to like outline what happens on the screen roughly to make this sound kind of a little bit root itself in, in the image. 
So I'm gonna make it brighter, then it flashes. I'm gonna save this session, by the way, because Ardor sometimes crashes now. Oh. I'm gonna make this track a little bit bigger so I can see it better. And then it's kind of fades away. Let's give it a little bit more. <laughs> I incidentally I incidentally clicked on another track inserting a MIDI region. I'm gonna shift right click to delete it. Let's hear what it does right now. Uh, might be shitty. Well, it doesn't. Okay, because we have said manual. I have to change this to play. Now it's gonna actually read the automation. All right, so like we have when we have no ring modulation, we actually have louder sound because our square wave is unaffected because ring modulation actually changes the volume of the waveform, the amplitude in time. But it does it so quickly that it alters the pitches. If you do ring modulation very slowly, you get a tremolo effect. Okay, but we also need to change the volume, I guess. Or maybe, I know what, because we can automate the filter cutoff. And this is going to affect only the main, the global filter in, uh, in AdSynth. Look, like if we automate the pick filter cutoff, it's gonna only change this one. So I could like change this in the middle, move it here, because the filter cutoff starts in the middle, so we can like shift it up and shift it down. So I'm gonna start with it, change it to play, so it does play the automation, and begin with the filter automate with the filter cutoff all the way up, and or somewhere else, maybe down. And maybe I will just kind of mimic the what we did here, very, very slightly. And I'm gonna maybe make this a little bit go up till the end, so it kinda uh, gains strength to blow up in the end. Let's see what it does. <laughs> Yeah, this is better. This is more what it more it fits the animation more. I don't like this part where it doesn't do anything and it's really steady and boring. I think it it should better just cut off there. So I'm gonna change the note so it ends here. And then insert another note. Yeah, it doesn't end right in, right where it should right now. And maybe I will change the automation so it starts with the cutoff fully closed. So our Lopez filter will just be opening right after the note started. Yeah. I think if we add some distortion on top of that, it's going to make a cool effect. Maybe I will split this into two separate tracks. It might be easier that way. I also think that it might do some good if I change the AdSense global filter type to, maybe not the type, but make it a little bit sharper with resonance. Nah, that sounds very old school and it doesn't really mean, it's it not necessarily cool. Yeah. I think we can hear more of the ring modulation and I think we hear a little too little of it. So I want to actually give this higher values overall so we'll get more of the distorted sound than just the clean one. Maybe this automation clip is a little bit too cluttered. I'm gonna press G, select a bunch of points and 
move them up yeah like this Hmm. Kind of dies very quickly, and we don't really. Oh, sorry, I pressed something. F, Shift Z. F maximizes a track or tries to maximize it in the VG visible space. Right now, it fits also the automation tracks. Shift Z. It's like Control Z for view. So if you just zoom somewhere else, when you can't find yourself, you should press Shift Z, and it should zoom you out one step at a time. Unfortunately, or fortunately, depends. And press E to make this note a little longer. And maybe leave the ring modulation on. I'm gonna press D to enter the draw mode. And like, just let the cutoff fall. Let's see. It doesn't really follow <laughs> the motion of our sparks here. So I need to do something about the automation. I think I'm gonna just Make it very, very simple. Just delete all the points. Make it... Nah. I want to deselect this, okay, so I don't delete it. And... Yeah, this actually sounds better. And it could be longer. Again. How about we use a different note here? Maybe go down one octave. Yeah, let's see. Kinda. It's a little bit quiet though. And the velocity is all the way up to 127. Okay. It starts to sound more synced. I want to try some distortion. And I'm going to try CV amp VTS, which is a plugin. I think it's reworked a bit by mod team. And it's a very nice processor for guitars. I'm going to keep it above others so I can see it all the times. At all times. And I think I'm going to automate the gain. Let's just loop this so I can experiment. I think it makes it more characterful. I'd like to add some very subtle reverb to just define some feeling of space because there it's Well, that's too much. Let's try it before the distortion. Actually, I like the amount of reverb before the final blip because then it's like it should just bah, just crack, explode, and there's nothing. Just silence, like the darkness we see. So I'm going to automate the mix ratio. Let's maybe use the right mode so I just can... Yeah, record this. Now it's in touch mode, so it plays back. And that's great. Wow, my timing is almost perfect with this. Look at that. That is perfect.
All right. I think I want some noise in here. Like there is very little noise. Maybe because I have the swoosh. Didn't play it. No, it is here. Okay, I'm, I'm hearing it. Let's just make this a little bit quieter. Okay, I'm gonna just maybe minimize the automation tracks so they don't disturb me. And I want to open up a new track. And I want just some noise. I re I just really want some noise. Really. It can be a simple white noise or maybe I can try making something a little bit more interesting. Let's try to do frequency modulation with mm, noise. Pink noise, why not? And make it bandpass filtered resonately with an envelope going from down to up, long. I'm just doing random stuff. I don't know what it's going to sound like. And, you know, it's going to be too much if I do this. Yeah. Uh, and in the end, let's go with a slight notch filter. Make it go from up to down. Because why not? And let's hear it. Okay. Guess I I have too much resonance. Ah, just a too long. Yeah. Let's give it more voices and more stereo, more detune for each voice. Nah, this sounds crappy. Let's do it in mono. And I'm just going to duplicate this voice, pan them hard left and right, and then change something about it, like the waveform or the pitch. And maybe let's try some big different bass waveform that is modulated. Maybe chirp. Ah, this is painful. And how about making it start higher in pitch or lower? Actually, it doesn't really matter. I like this. It sounds somewhere between a jet plane, an old synthesizer or tape machine, and a storm. Okay, but it's a little bit too long. I need to shorten the f shorten the envelopes. Cut the envelopes. Cut them. Cut them down. Yeah. Let's m let's give some fade in. Whoa, that's really sick. And give some fade out. However, our global envelope is going to limit us right now, so I need to increase the release there. Oh, no. That's not very good. A little bit too long. Let's make the pitch fall once we release the key. Maybe shorter. Okay, I wanted to have two voices, so I'm going to copy this one, pan it left, but not zero, because zero means random. And you want this in the left channel. Now, paste it here. We're still using the external modulator one, so nothing changes. We just change the padding. And it sounds in mono. But now I can change the pitch of one of them. Or the waveform. And it's going to make a difference. Let's add some weird harmonics. Whoa, that's very loud. Uh, I want to change the magnitude type to, like, something else. So we have more precision. Yeah. I want just a hint of that weird noise in the right channel. And let's do something else in the left one. Let's change the magnitude type and go for higher. 
It actually kind of sounds the same, but different. And it makes it stereo. It makes it wider. Okay, I think I want to check the global filter. And how about... is fun. All right. Let's uh I want to check what can I do with the pitch modulation pitch wheel. So I'm going to go to controllers in the global window and here we have the pitch wheel band range in cents. 200 cents is two semitones because 100 cents is a semitone. So if I want to go to an octave I need 1200. Yay, this is cool. If I can do this, whoa, this is gonna be great sound for the anticipation before the big explosion. So uh, I actually don't remember if I tried before recording mod wheel in Murder 5. Let's see what we can do with distortion also. Because it might do something cool. I might do something bad. Let's turn up the gain. So the drive, it's the pre-gain and the post-gain, the level. Let's keep it low. Well, that's complete havoc. What if we filter this? Before distortion. Uh, I guess the gain, the drive is way too much. Now we could add this just a little bit to the original one. I think just a tiny bit of a strange reverberation could help this. Well, not so big. Let's go to random and make it very short. I want kind of room cellar sound. Let's try to give it some more high frequency. So I'm releasing the low pass. Let's hear it all wet. The room size initial delay well kind of kind of could work let's see if we shouldn't maybe I should high pass a little bit of this because there's a lot ton of bass I think uh, let's go a little bit lower and search with the peak filter what is nice and what do we want to remove? Yeah, now it sounds a little bit less boomy. Let's try it. Uh weird thing is, I think something's different. I don't know. Okay. I need to hit the notes more gently because there's 
a certain amount of modulation that is too much and it just destroys everything. It sounds better when I hit it slightly. Okay, let's try to record this. Hmm. Okay, I guess I missed it. I wonder to see if there is... Yeah, the pitch wheel is recorded. And I guess it is played back. But the note was too... Uh, too hard. I like struck it very hard. So I'm gonna use my mouse wheel to make it softer. I think we could also go with two octaves of pitch bend. So let's go to controllers. Ah, this is not this instance. Okay. It's in free controllers. We have 1200, let's go to 2400. The, the big, like the double arrows, go 100 cent bit jumps and the small go one, which isn't very useful to me. I never use the small ones, never. And you can see that it's a bit jagged because we have a very limited Resolution, we have only 227 steps for the CC controls and the pitch wheel and the mod wheel. Pitch band and the mod wheel apply also. So you have, you, we see, you see we have a lot of aliasing, but we can actually draw our own automation because this is very, very simple. Oh, we need to change the type of this. Mode, discrete, linear. Yes, this is what I wanted. Okay. Uh, crap. I don't know what the, what is the rest position? Okay, the first, first sample, 8, 5, 7, 6. Okay, because I guess, yeah, that's the range of 700, 1600. Is it there? Yeah, it sounds awesome. I just need to cut it off in the right moment. And I think, I'm going to press the E key again. I think I'm going to cut it. I'm gonna cut it short, maybe let it sound longer, but I am going to use the fader automation. Go for maybe touch and see if I can record it. Yeah. I'm just gonna remove the last point and this one too, so it's forever silent. Let's see. Ah. Okay, I wasn't so quick that it it's just instantaneous because, well, that's not humanly possible. I'm going to add a little bit of a gain right in the end. Well, that's too late because this is the flash. Okay, I need to back this off. So we have zero decibels and we can just add a little bit. We have six decibels left. So we can make a little bit of a click in the end. Oh, it's very difficult to select this. Okay, got it. And uh, there's one. Okay, shift, right click, delete stuff. Let's see. Actually, yeah, well, it could last a little bit longer. I think I'm gonna try to. Okay, can't move them both. Oh, I can. Let's hear this note again. Yeah, this is better. And I wanted to start a little bit more silently. So I'm going to use the draw two more points. So it will a little bit fade in. Ha. Huh. Okay, what can we call this? I'll call this Screamer. Because I can. I can has has burgers. I can has internet burgers. Oh no, control Z. I don't want to move that point. I want just to move this one or remove it. Shift right click. Yeah. Okay, what do we have and what do we miss? I think I want some more noise because I like initially, you know, remember 
Let's try to do frequency modulation. Let's make some really noise. Just simply noise. Just like that. Just nothing extra. Just noise, okay? Come on. You can do this. Let's make it stereo. I'm going to copy this voice. Paste it. Make it all the way to the right. It's stereo noise. Now, I think I want to use a bandpass filter. Because the filter is tracking the keyboard, it responds to the pitch of the keys I'm, I'm hitting. Here it is. 60. Oh, yeah, middle is zero. Oh, it shouldn't be. Ah, I'm mistaken. It actually is the velocity sensing. I'm going to disable the velocity sensing. I want frequency tracking. Sounds like tape stop, but it's not. Let's play C major. Okay, this the envelopes are cool, but a little bit too long. I'm gonna make them. I want to find the very bass tone for the release and then make it a little bit longer okay now I would add a crap ton of reverb onto this but it's a very short let's make a bigger room size and Make the dampening lower so we have more high frequency. Wow. How about we make this narrower? Not a good idea. I'm gonna make this wider. Uh. Plain noisiness might need some modulation to not be so plain and uninteresting. Gonna... Just add a very, very subtle phaser. And onto that, a little chorus. Well, it's a bit too fast. And I think I need to get rid of the bass because after the reverb, the bass is very messy. Okay, let's try to record some notes. Um, okay, so we didn't really get away with that simple noise. <laughs> All right, of course, the decay is going to be cut off. And I can do this right now. Like this. Ah, sorry. This is too early. And I also like the anticipation of the cutoff. So there's a little bit of a gain. Ah, okay, we're not using this. I need to make it play. It sounds like it's cut short, which might be a good thing or a bad thing. Let's see what we can do if I just let it decay. Yeah, I think I want this to decay. 
Maybe not so loud. Yeah, I'm just give it a few seconds of the... Yeah, there's no problem. Like this can, this can, this can work. Okay, I think I'm gonna be doing one last sound, and this is going to be a hit for the explosion. And I want to try something like a broken glass. And how I'm gonna do this is I'm gonna. Draw in a bunch of notes that are going to imitate different small particles of glass are have been smashed and are falling in all directions. And the higher notes represent smaller particles because smaller particles make higher pitch sounds. Uh, this might be a little bit long. I'm gonna see, enter the edit mode, maybe even move these notes up. As you can see, it's not very easy to manipulate. Ah, here are no notes. They were invisible for a while. Let's move this. Okay. Uh, what happened? Okay, looks like I can't move this because it's gonna explode. But the timing seems to be right. So I'm gonna open the broken glass, the simple sine wave. And what I want to do is um, actually like use an impulse. I'm gonna use a power wave and make it so that it it's a snap. You can see that there's a lot of harmonics, a lot of harmonic material. I'm gonna make this down and use an amplitude envelope to make this just a one click because it's gonna, of course, repeat. Yeah, but right now we have just one click. If I make this longer. Okay. Yes, it's this one. I'm not mistaken. And I'm going to change this to a bandpass filter. And you see, if I made it very, very resonant, it simulates the fact that we have a piece of something that receives energy. This is our impulse, the power wave, the simple impulse of the power wave. It's the energy, the blast, the hit. And the bandpass filter resonating is modeling the tiny shard of glass that is actually resonating this energy on a specific frequency band. Right now it responds to velocity. So I'm gonna disable velocity sensing and enable frequency tracking. And I can play. Okay, this is very quiet, so I need to turn it up because you might not hear it. Actually, right now, re recording this is in trouble. Yeah, and it's gonna sound better than this. I'm gonna remove this. I'm gonna just record my broken glass part. Not totally happy with it. Maybe I should make them sound shorter or... Huh, funny. It's kind of uh well, it would be nice if I could make the move the regions. I can't. Yeah, it's a bit late. 
And the other can't handle this. Okay, and just need to record it on time. All right, this seems to be about right. Uh, let's close this interface. I'm gonna I'm reopening it. Like edit with generic controls will open a different interface, and then I can reopen it, and it will just pop in on the top. I want to make these a little bit maybe shorter. Oh. You see, the less resonance we get, um, the more of the impulse we have and the less of the tone. Let's also make this pan uh, randomly. So every note has different panning. So that kind of makes the cloud of the like glass shards wider in stereo. And I think that actually this needs just a little bit of reverb and maybe some EQ. Uh, let's make this more of the tail and less of the earlier reflections. Make it a little bit maybe shorter, a bit smaller. Yeah. And I want to compress this pretty hard and see what happens. Gonna lower the threshold. Okay, it's pretty loud right now. I'm gonna keep this above others. Uh, I'm gonna lower the makeup gain and the threshold and just make the attack and release very short so it's very closely following. Okay, it's very loud right now. And I wonder, let's make it quieter. Okay, let's play the whole thing. Kind of interesting. I miss some really something hard. So let's make it an explosion. I'm just going to dial in a single note right here. And I'm going to do a very quick patch. Okay, we're now like feeding the MIDI data right to the broken glass. Uh, come show your face. And I'm going to enable subsynth, dial in a little bit of harmonics, make them really wide, make them lower. Yeah. Now give it a pitch envelope. Maybe make it less harmonic. Hmm, this doesn't. This doesn't do very, very big changes. Okay, let's make it start with max. So we have a click on the beginning. However, I can hardly hear the difference right now. Make this shorter and louder. Yeah. And now maybe even add the bandwidth envelope. It kind of sounds like a snare, so maybe I should pitch it down. Yeah, and make it shorter because now it's so long. Okay, I'm just going to disable the stretch, the envelope stretch. So on lower notes, it's make longer envelopes. If I disable the stretch, which here means I turn it all the way to the left, we get the same envelope length for every note. Okay, now the key to making an explosion sound is distortion. Once you get the noise. Let's make it low. Give it the full width. And let's try another passive distortion.
and C, some reverb of Taeyeon type bandwidth, but want it very shorter. Huh, I see that I also want this to be very much shorter. I'm gonna convert this envelope to a free mode because then I can add some points and I want a shorter attack and then a very, very slight release, but I don't want this to actually be so classic. You see, I don't want this over long distorted hit at the beginning. But that would be too long. Yeah, this is great. And finally, I'm going to insert an EQ and maybe use a high pass with resonance. To boost some lows. Maybe that's not a usual use of low pass, but I use that very often because it cuts off what you don't need and accentuates what you need. Yeah, I think adding these highs make it more punchy. It's, I think it's a little too loud. Let's see how it sounds with the... <laughs> it's a little bit too quiet, fo. I think. I'll try use some ex uh, <laughs> uh, compression. I think I could make it more punchy still. So I will lower the threshold and give it a longer attack so the initial hit of the explosion can go through the compression and then a shorter release without with not much difference. Let's kick up the ratio and lower the threshold. It makes it kind of a bit shorter. So I'm gonna try to make the release so short that it's even working like a distortion. And finally, I want to automate the release of the Let's set it to touch, or no, let's set it to right. Well, I don't know if that was good, uh, if it's going to sound good. Let's hear it. Let's see. Well, I think the fade outs are a little bit too, too loud and the glass is too loud. I'm gonna also automate its release. So we have uh, yeah, maybe make the releases shorter. Uh. Yeah, this is very short. But it has some of the tail left behind, which is nice. I really like it. I think I want to do something else with the with the noise because it's kind of boring. And I would like to maybe automate the bender to change the pitch a little bit throughout the note. So I'm gonna just draw an automation. Oh, I forgot that it doesn't it won't have it won't have an effect because I'm using uh filter for that pitch. So I need to make it automate the filter cutoff. Let's write down. No, just let's see what happens. Okay, but this is way, way too aggressive. I just want this to be very, very subtle. I'm just gonna let's see this. Yeah, it's it's more lively. There's something happening in this sound. It's kind of a, a little bit of emotion. Maybe I need a little bit more even. 
that's here. No, that's already too much. Because it's... I don't want this to be so... lively. Okay. I think we're done with this, actually. What What is left is some mixing, uh, like balancing the levels, which I'm gonna try to do now. However, it's good to let your work rest for a little while before you call it finished. Because sometimes when you're working on it straight for an hour or a few hours, you can't really hear the differences and you can't really hear the balance of the thing. So the next day you might play this and you will instantly hear that the bass like is way too much or there is no treble at all or there is no mid. And All right, but for now, I'm gonna call this a day. Whew. Oh, wait, 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 wait. We need to set the final levels, okay? This is not done. You can't really just use it right now. So what I'm gonna do is add a calf limiter. Like the levels are right now very low and this might be good, uh, but probably we're gonna need them higher. So I'm gonna use the limit and we're hitting like the limit just with the final hit it, which is nice, I like this I usually disable the ASC because it does something that I don't really understand right now and it's something that looks like the sound of it and it messes like with the release I don't know I'm not sure how it works still I read the documentation on the Calf website, but I don't really know what it does. So I disable it, it's on by default. Also, what you might want to do, which is kind of, I it's hard to hear a difference, but I really might want to kick the oversampling up because you got some fast sounds. And this might round the sphinx a bit. Also, I'm gonna, Lower the output gain just a notch, maybe too much, maybe with control. Yeah, I'm just gonna drag this like negative three dB, so or negative half. So we don't hit the zero dB level because that's distortion, and you can't you can't really hear this, but it might behave a little bit unexpected. It might be somewhere distorted, so let's keep it undistorted. Okay. So this is it. Okay, this is it for this video. I hope you learned something useful. If you have any questions about what I did, about the tools I use, if you have any suggestions for what I should focus on in the next videos, please leave them in the comments. And I will see you in the next video. Bye.